Welcome to Monet Cafe and probably the most interesting video I've ever created on painting in the dark. I'm artist Susan Jenkins and I'm glad you're joining me uh, for this experiment that is very, very helpful for you as an artist. I hope you'll try it. So what I did, I got up real early in the morning to beat the sunrise. <clears throat> I turned out the lights in my studio, every light that I could turn out and I even had to turn out the light on my iPad. Uh, it took me about an hour to set up, of course, to get coffee and everything, so it was about 5.30 by the time I got started. Turned my iPad off, and my camera actually compensates for the dark, so that was a good thing, because you can kind of see a little bit with my camera, uh, but I couldn't see as much as you're seeing. Now, this is the reference photo that I'll be using, which is a photo of a picture I took the night before when the sun was going down in the field behind my house. Now, here I am with the video footage, actually, turning out my ring light. I really love this light, by the way. Thank you, patrons. You helped me buy that light. And turning out my studio light. And you see how dark it is? I did have a little bit of illumination from my Amazon Alexa. And uh, again, this you're seeing more color than I was seeing. I was kind of testing my, my camera out here. <clears throat> and uh, I couldn't see color like this at all. I only had a very dim light in my hallway these are this is more like what i saw <laughs> um and i want to turn the lights on now to give you uh, some information as to my supplies i'm using a piece of pastel matte uh, sanded surface uh, i had to print out the reference photo because i couldn't have the illumination from the ipad that i i like to work from my ipad often so i had to do it was a bad printout but these i did a set of terry ludwig it's the maggie price basic set some of the other terry ludwig sets i grabbed four terry ludwig darks i knew i needed some dark and i kept them separate in front of me so i would know where the darks were and uh, so again this is me getting started i had a little uh, pastel pencil to kind of sketch in what I could see for a little bit of a, a horizon line and the tree line. And again, it was even dimmer than you're seeing now. And there's, there's actually not a lot for you to see here. I'll probably speed this up some, but I wanted to talk through this a little bit. Here's what was so interesting, uh, and I encourage you to try this. What happens when you turn the lights out and you work in the dark is a few things. One is that you isolate big shapes when you're looking at your reference image. Uh, you can't see a lot of detail. All you can see is the big shapes. And that's what we talk about all the time in uh, basically getting your painting started is to begin with the big shapes and don't get too fussy. So that it isolates that for you, which is awesome. The other thing that it does is it cancels out the color and this is kind of part two to the video I just uploaded on understanding value. And I knew I was going to do this, but I decided it would be too long of a video to do it all together. So I, this is part two and understanding value. Uh, you can strengthen your, that, that principle or that concept by turning the lights out. Again, you can't really see anything but value, meaning lights and darks now in the reference photo that you can see a little bit pasted up there um, I don't I didn't want to put it in here for you to see it I wanted you to kind of look and work in the dark with me a little bit with this uh, but in the reference photo you can see it's a, a lot of dark and, but you can see easily where that sky is and because I was a little closer to it you can see my face is being lit up by my phone um, just the phone I use my phone I have awesome the new iPhone uh, Pro Max is just so awesome with its camera capabilities another thing that my patrons have helped me to make this channel better if you don't know I have a patreon page it's www.patreon.com slash Susan Jenkins. And a lot of people from Monet Cafe who've been following for years and getting all the free art instruction have been so kind to want to support the channel, to improve the channel, and to keep... I've been able to create more videos because of their support. But for $5 a month, you can support Monet Cafe to keep these videos coming. And they... I get so many thank yous from people all over the world that don't have any resources for learning how to paint, uh, specifically in pastel painting. So thank you always for your support. That $5 uh, really adds up and helps a lot. Also, I give my patrons a little extra content um, and we have a lot of fun. So uh, it's a great group. So anyway, that's just something I'm thanking my patrons for. But anyway, so I am getting in. I wanted to go ahead and get kind of a general path in. I actually kind of uh, in that field could see a, an idea of a path 
with the grasses and the way the grasses were growing and receding but I like to draw the viewers eye into the painting so you can again you can see a little bit more than I could see with my my uh, real vision versus what the camera is recording but you get the idea that it really is all about dark and light and medium values now here's what's interesting and I think what you would find interesting if you do like I did and you give yourself uh, an assortment of pastels kind of like I did maybe pull out a set or or get a just a good good variety of pastels you will um, uh, inadvertently make some interesting color selections now this is a third thing why it's really good to practice this we get in habits with the choices uh, our color choices uh, and uh, we sometimes uh, ignore certain colors and, add, and they're not our favorite or we just don't see that color as easily and so when you paint like this and you have your selection non predetermined it forces you to grab colors you wouldn't normally grab now it I was quite surprised at the end and uh, pleased I was very pleased I definitely used more of a particular color that I don't use a whole lot as as a final painting and I actually got some really interesting colors in the sky that weren't even blue okay so this just is such a great exercise so I will speed this up a little bit but I think uh, it's gonna be really fun when we turn the lights on with this thing and uh, I think you will experience the same exhilaration and um, thankfulness that you did this experiment and I'm definitely going to do more of this. All right, I'm going to speed this up to the music and then we'll be ready for the grand reveal soon. Oh, and I also wanted to mention that I gave myself a 15 minute time limit to do the portion of the painting that is in the dark. And I think that's a great way to, well, you, you don't have light enough to get too fussy about the painting, but it's a good way to get the, the uh, base of the painting done. And then you can turn the lights on and uh, be surprised <laughs> and work on your painting some more. Okay, I'm going to speed this up and very soon we will see the exciting results. All right, my 15 minutes is up and it's time to turn on the lights to see where this painting is at so far. I was very surprised that I put like a lime green in the sky and some pinks in the sky that I thought were lavenders. I'm pointing out here, I've had some pastel matte paper that's got some sort of a defect in it, some little ridges that keep showing up. I fix it by blending some pastels over it, but it was a little frustrating. I'm gonna see if I can uh, uh, talk back to the manufacturer and, and get another pad of paper. Now again, this technique or exercise is best to do for the initial stages of your painting. Here you can see kind of those little ridges, those lines in there. I've, I've got to get that fixed. But here are my pastels that I used. I had a little system because it was dark and I couldn't see what I was using. I didn't use any of those other ones. That is the Terry Ludwig Shades of Nature and Umber Shades and Shadows. I was going over to remind myself of the name of those. Yes, Umber Shades and Shadows and Shades of Nature. I didn't use any of those. I only used that Maggie Price basic set. And I had the pastels turned up so I could see the ones or feel the ones that I had used already. 
Now I'm going to zoom in a bit. You can see that defect in the paper. <clears throat> that wasn't the purpose for zooming in. I want you to see the colors that I've chosen here. And I used, uh, the, like I said, that kind of lime green in the sky. I thought the pink was a lavender. I was just kind of guessing. and But that would have been the color I would have normally gone to, more of a blue periwinkle or, you know, something more sky colored. Not that I always do um, blue in the sky. Uh, but I used a lot more of that peachy uh, rosy reds in there too and um, that I'm still pointing out that defect and oh I decided to use my my new technique I've been using is a little piece of chamois cloth the chamois cloth that you buy to dry your cars with I got a piece at the dollar store and um, I have really been enjoying using the chamois cloth to blend never at the end of a painting but especially in a case like this I use it to kind of blend out some of those um, ridges or, or marks on the paper. And again, I had only given myself 15 minutes to finish this initial part while in the dark, so I recommend you um, don't paint too awfully long because you literally won't see what you're doing. <laughs> but it is a, I think it's a good time limit. Uh, that's the time limit I would use again in uh, repeating this uh, exercise. And uh, then one of my goals after that was I liked the freshness that it had and because sometimes I think we can all have a tendency to overwork a painting. We have to purposely kind of walk away to make sure we don't do that. I it, had made it a goal to keep this one very fresh with really fresh marks and also it was a really nice time for me because it was early in the morning I had my coffee I don't know about you guys I'm a morning person and I love the wee hours of the morning and um, it was just a really special time to paint I think I'd like to start a little morning series of paintings I think that's very interesting too because there's another artist named Susan Jenkins I think Oh, forgive me if I'm wrong. She's either in her late 80s or 90s. She has been producing beautiful artwork for a long time. She is an oil painter primarily. I don't know if she has many pastels, but I ran across her somehow years ago, and I love her work. But she has a series or, you know, a, a grouping of paintings um, called her morning paintings. I was like, wow, it, it must just be, you know, my little kindred spirit or something because I love the morning too and I really want to try to set some time uh, also too because there's so much going on in life to keep these videos coming it would help me if I get up early in the morning to do these because you know how life gets in the way so many things and I have so many other things I do besides um, uh, my art career so but this is my favorite right you guys know what I'm talking about all right so I am going to I'll tr I'm going to try to zoom in on this a little bit um, so you can see more uh, and I'll provide for my patrons I will provide the reference image if you wanted to use my re that's another little special thing my patrons get I give them often my reference material but I'll provide an attachment for the reference if you'd like to try to recreate it but you can recreate it with your own reference image or recreate this exercise and I really think you're going to learn a lot so if you have struggled with value or seeing value this is going to be very helpful for you and very beneficial. Um, okay, now I'm adding that purple. Doesn't that just look nice? I love that purple. All right, so watch the rest of this. I am, let me, I'm just going to speed it up two times. It's not much at all. And um, add some music. You guys continue to watch and I'll pop back in um, before it's over. Enjoy.
I'm wrapping it up at this point. Again, I decided to keep it very fresh and perhaps even a bit unfinished looking. So I decided just to go ahead and sign it. I was very pleased with the results. I like how it was not overworked and I decided to call it Dramatic Ending. Also, I've got more of a system now where I'm sharing my original paintings with anyone who signs up for my email list on my website, www.susanjenkinsfineart.com. You can sign up and get my information about my paintings, etc. You can also find the link to purchase the Monet Cafe Artist Series bracelets. They're awesome. There are three styles to choose from, and this is another way you can help support the channel if you don't want to do the monthly $5 subscription. So turn out the lights and turn on your knowledge of value and make your paintings even stronger. Check out all these links that I have on this end screen. And as always, happy painting. <laughs>